Greetings. This is the man who pretends to be Charles Darwin. And what do we have on my desk here? For those of you who have never seen these, these are card catalogs. No, not library card catalogs. Personal, scholarly card catalogs. This is what we used to do to keep track of the vast scientific literature that was available when I was in graduate school in the 1980s. Uh, to keep track of it so that we could use it in writing theses, writing articles, etc. Because in writing a scientific article, you have to cite the work of previous scientists and show citations for those things that you consider to be facts already established and that you are not having to establish yourself. Well, when I began my academic career at this institution over 20 years ago, card catalogs such as this were already totally useless. But I brought them because I had worked so hard on them. See, these card catalogs are full of cards that are similar to this one. Here I have the authors and the year up at the top, and then I have the title of the article, and then an abbreviation of the journal, the volume, and the pages. And then I put a small short summary of the results so that I wouldn't have to look back at the paper to see what they found out. This one is about changes in chlorophyll content, chlorophyll A to B ratio, uh, for instance. So that's what I had to do. Now, in grad school, we thought we had to write down cards for every article that we might need sometime in the future, and uh, even if we didn't end up using them. And these are alphabetic. Oh, look at this. Right here, this one. You see it's been beat up a little bit. You know why? Because when I was moving down here, this fell out of my car onto a rural highway. There's no other traffic. And I pulled over and I almost just left it there. But I thought, you know, this is going to be a safety hazard to other vehicles. I was ready to get rid of it then, but I've clung to it all these years. They were back in a cabinet and we found them recently. Now, what am I going to do with them? Okay, but anyway, even at the time, these were becoming obsolete. In the 1980s, we were starting to have database managers that would allow us to search for keywords, but they were only for those papers that we had entered into the computer. So instead of having cards, what we had was computer entries. And I even wrote my thesis on a terminal of a mainframe computer. Now, in case you don't know what a terminal is, it's today we have individual computers that do everything right in one place, but we only had terminals where you type things in and it went to a mainframe computer and then bounced back to you. Well, at the time, there was no widely available internet. Instead, what we had to do was have a big library. I was at the University of Illinois and it had a very big biology library and it had lots and lots of journals. I think it even had the Soviet Journal of Ecology. I don't want to even imagine what was in that journal. Uh, there was also the Butler University Botanical Studies. I have no idea whether it still exists, but the library subscribed to it. This was immensely expensive to subscribe to all these journals on paper, but that's what we had to do because there was no widely available internet. Now, today, you just look on Google Scholar. Now, I'm not saying that other search engines are as good or better, uh, but uh, that's what I use is Google Scholar, and I can find even the most obscure references there, such as the Oklahoma Native Plant Record. You can find anything you want to from that during a Google search, and that includes my articles that are published in such an obscure fashion. I'm not really Charles Darwin. Uh, my articles published in such an obscure fashion that nobody would ever find them. They just have to look around in the library. Okay, well... What am I going to do with these? I almost just left this one on the road. So what am I going to do with it? I guess there's only one thing to do. This is Charles Darwin telling you about it.